<laughs> I love it, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Download the Uplift. My name is Gabriel Mark, and I am here live reporting from Texas, the Lone Star State, joined as always by my co host with the most, <laughs> the most toasts, yeah, Dane Davis. Hey, you can't just always make up words, man. You, <laughs> immediately, I thought of toast. I was like, thank you for getting that. The most toast, I know. Well, yo, Dane, check it out, brother. This is another historic day and download the uplift history because guess what, my dude? Looks like we're a tripod again. Tripod because we got interview number two live from Boston, Ken Parley. Yo, what is going on, Ken? Thank you so much for joining us, brother. I know he's, I've known Ken for a long time and we'll get into that a little later, but he's like, this dude's doing a podcast now. He's like, all right, I'll help him out, <laughs> share a little knowledge. So thanks for coming on, man. 100%. Yeah, man. Yeah, we have our first expert. Well, actually, no. Johnny's an expert with uh, with live sound, so never mind. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, I like the idea of having people from all different trades and crafts come on, whether you're an artist or an expert, anyone that's just cool to talk to. And luckily, both of us have pretty cool, diverse networks of people. Like my neighbors, the um, he's a healthcare professional. He's going to be on in a couple of weeks. And we got some cool stuff going on. Before we get into it, let's do a tiki check. Yo, Ken, are you on board with the tiki? Yeah, I borrowed this um, from my daughter. It's It's got tiki likes things. <laughs> it's tropical. Okay. It's tropical. He's, he's it's tropical. tropical. Yeah. Uh, it's tropical. It, it, yeah, 100%. Like a great, grapefruit, right? Iced coffee. Yeah, grapefruit. <laughs> And a leaf that resembles a pot, maybe? Listen, yeah. looking at that cup, I feel like I'm transferred to 808 Hawaii itself, man. Oh, so. fantastic. <laughs> so we have uh, Ken Parley joining us from Boston. I'm in Central Time and Dane's out there in Pacific Time in Las Vegas. So God bless technology and God bless the internet and StreamYard, which seems to be all right so far. But like I said, we're going to dive in deeper to who Ken Parley is for y'all. But just briefly, he is a real estate professional. Every kind of thing from making them to selling them to digging them out of the ground. Ken Parley is the man with a plan as well. So um, yeah, man, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But I just want to give everyone a couple show notes. This is week 11. We're almost at three months strong of download the uplift industries and corporate Operated. It's going well, man. Still steady growth. We're staying after it. And uh, Ken, because he's a natural, like he he should be having the life coach lessons. He's like, well, so who's your demographic, blah, blah, blah. And he, he got me thinking all day at the park and everything. And he's right. I think let's concentrate on what we're doing. And then at six months, we're going to sit down and have a meeting and talk about where the channel is, look at some analytics and and we'll see if we need to pivot or not. But it's always a growing thing here at Download the Uplift. So thank you for that advice, Ken. 100%, bro. Yeah. The money's in the details. Definitely. So just got to focus on them. That's it. Well, no, he, he brought up, he's like, dude, think about Mr. Beast. He's like, he just bought, just think about just buying a bunch of scratch tickets and scratching them every week, which actually would be freaking great. <laughs> you do rails uh, with that. You just spoon feed them to people. And I wouldn't be surprised if you had a thousand subs. Yeah. For a couple of weeks. Uh, maybe. Might cost you 200 bucks. Three hundred one dollar scratch offs just to get them in the door, right? Yeah, that two yeah. for one special. Then you pick up a problem. Now you're down a couple of jakes. How much? <laughs> how much money did he actually spend on that video? Because because he he did like oh, I, I don't know. It was like how many scratch tickets to get a million dollars or something like something like that. Oh, was he already did this video? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah oh. He, he, he did it, and uh, he he spent he spent like uh, thousands or like maybe even a hundred. I feel like it was like thirty grand. Uh, my children and I are big fans of Mr. Beast. Um, oh, same here. Same it's, here. It's good content. He's you know, he's hot's in the right place. And uh, and I, you know, if you you listen to his channel too, he's he's rooting on uh, creators all the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, he is. He was on Rogan, mm -hmm. and he talks about everything from thumbnail creation to, I mean, listen, his videos they make sense. Like I'm gonna walk a marathon with the biggest shoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's definitely good. But when you said that lottery thing, I didn't even know he already made it. I was like, damn, Ken, that's a good idea. <laughs> like, we should do that. It's yeah. not like it still doesn't work. It's just fresh content. You know, his is seven years old. All right, stuff goes a little stale. Just do it again. Right. Nah, well, sure. you know. 
<laughs> like getting building houses, it doesn't really get old. It's very similar process. You can put some more um, building science into it, which is a very difficult thing to do in our archaic industry. I don't know. You know, you know, it's bringing it back to basics. People love scratch tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just realized, Dane, do you know what scratch tickets are? Because in Nevada, there's no lottery. Like there's 24 hour everything else. Do you know what scratch tickets are? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in the dark ages here, man. I, I have no idea. What well, all right. Well, about. all right. First of all, born in South Africa. Um, oh and then yeah, South Africa is, don't know either. <laughs> just, is there scratch tickets in South Africa? Uh, you know, probably. Probably somewhere. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. But yeah, um, I, I know what they are. I've, I've, I've scratched a few. Either way, that's what it is. Just so you know, man, it's like this foil covered. You might scratch off, you win money, but it's a very exotic thing. So before we came on the podcast, I, I decided to uh, nourish myself with soup. And um, I said to the crew, I said, guys, you got to know I'm filled up with all the goodness from this Walmart branded soup. And I just wanted to share with you guys the what's on this can, because I said there's not it's all natural, baby. It's all natural. There's nothing bad in this soup. So I just want to share with you guys real quick. So check this out. This is what's in this soup. We got uh, ingredients. Where's the ingredients? Okay, ready? Chicken stock, onions, carrots, diced chicken, uh, egg noodles, celery, peas, corn starch, salt, garlic, spices, organic. See, no one mm -hmm. listens to me. I, I don't know. There's an asterisk by everything. So it's it's like, yeah. is it that? All the stars. See all the stars? <laughs> yeah, that is right. weird. Scroll down to see the, the subtext. Yeah. Not disclosed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sketchy poison. I, I don't know, man. That might as well just be like quotation marks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm feeling good. It was $2.30. I'm feeling great. Uh, they're using real words, not not scientific words. So there you go. Um, Dana, let's talk about it. Are you stoked to have our second guest? Where are you at this week? How's your week been? What's going on, man? Yeah, man, I'm stoked. Uh, I've I've had just a busy week, just uh, you know, working my regular job and stuff like that, doing some vocal tuning and some other production stuff. But yeah, it's been a good week. What about you? Oh man, life goes quick out here in Texas, baby. Man, there's ta there's uh, a <laughs> the craziest thing I told I've told you both, but for the audience, I'm in a part of Texas where there's legit cowboys walking around. It's I don't know, it's like it's wild, man. I'm in like the wild west out here, but uh, it, it's cool, brother. That's Just cool. staying busy, staying after that. Download the uplift dream where when we fall, we try and uplift you. But uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a solid week. Did you know, boys, that today? And tomorrow, but after this airs, I saw, I'm i sorry to the audience, but today and tomorrow are Prime Days on Amazon. Did you guys I, know mm -hmm. that between the two days, they're going to sell over $14 billion worth of merchandise? I spent two grand about an hour ago. So <laughs> 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 it's like a, it's like, I need five mattresses. There you go. Thank you. You're you're, uh, you're helping uh, Bezos' fund for uh, him traveling into space. It's nice. He he, he definitely needs it. <laughs> On a mission. On a mission. Uh, he's so far behind, dude. What's his called? Like Blue Blue Lagoon Blue or something? <laughs> Blue Origins, I think. Blue Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got technical difficulties out there in Boston. <laughs> it's trash. <laughs> we got it going though. I think I got it. Well, what I didn't know when I saw this is that do you guys think with this and things like TMU and do you think we're at the point where we're like Medicaid, like we're doing like re retail therapy? And do you guys think that we have too much stuff? The, uh, so so the, the funny thing is uh, today I was, I was in like this meeting at work and um, they were talking about just having like the Amazon app and like just all these other store apps. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to just spend money because like you get an ad, like there's a sale, you know, through your email or whatever. And then you just, you log on and you can just so easily just spend a hundred bucks to get that free ship in or whatever it is. And I, I think people do a lot of shopping therapy. I do as well. What do you think, Ken? It's relative, whether it's an asset or a liability, something that consumes your time, your energy, your effort or cost you money to hold. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not a big fan of that stuff. But if you have something that, you know, creates production uh, in your life, um, I want more of that. So that's what I consistently do. Everything I bought those mattresses. Well, I'm going to get all that money back in probably about four months. So I'm okay with having a lot of mattresses. But if, if things are, are getting in your way and they restrict your ability to focus, or it might be as simple as having too many pairs of socks in your drawer, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's got to clean out their sock drawer every once in a while. Dump the thing out. Buy 30 pairs of the same sock. Wear them. Get rid of that decision. Create deflation in your life. Mm. And that helps. If, if things are getting in your way, it's a problem. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's, that's something I'm really focusing on right now. Like I'm cleaning out my emails. I'm cleaning out my text messages, mm -hmm. uh, try, trying to clean out you know my room and my office and stuff like that. Like just having that clutter and, and all that stuff weighing on your head or just not being able, being able to find something like easy. Yeah, it's, it's horrible to to have to deal with that to get anything done. So mm. I agree. And sometimes that can be kind of daunting. Like what I did this year was literally I picked three items a day. I think I've mentioned it before, but it was so helpful. Instead of looking at all this nonsense and a storage unit, it's like sell, donate, or throw it away and mm. just pick three items a day. And I'll tell you what, I got rid of my storage unit, put some money in my pocket, and I don't miss any of it. Like I can say that for a fact. So, I mean... But Dane, you have every, and Ken has, Ken has probably every gadget and tool and stuff for his business under, under the sun. And same with Dane with his audio business, his video business, you both are just have stuff, but I get it. It's like, do I let this go? I might need it sometime. So I get that that can be kind of like, yeah. One metric, one metric I like to use is right. We're in these buildings and we know they're quite expensive. Now, if I'm in a thousand square foot building and I'm paying two thousand dollars a month in rent, every square foot is costing me what a year. And if that inanimate object is consuming that space, right? You're paying rent wow. to hold this to hold this thing, right? Yeah. You know, my kids have a lot of squishmallows. <laughs> so yes, they do. I might have spent three or four grand in squishmallows, but those things sitting in my house cost me another three or four too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. They take up that space, but you know. Um, that's one metric I always like to display across people's bows where, you know, people, Oh, I need more space. I'm like, no, you just got to use your space wiser. Hmm. Yeah. Not, not a lot of people think about that, but I, I've, I've also thought about that over the years. It's like every, every thing that takes up space in your house is just a, not only is, is that not usable space anymore, but it's, yeah, it's just taking up your time and energy. And time to go by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's wild. I, I also wanted to share that stuff about Amazon because when I was going through my notes, apparently there's a big phishing scam. Download the audio, uh, download the uplift audience. Be careful if you see a uh, suspicious, I'm going to pull it up for y'all. Suspicious um, scammers are trying to like send you phishing emails and calls about um, uh, Amazon Prime and Prime Days and just be careful. You know, I get so bummed out when I hear these these stories of, you know, people that just answer these calls from like, oh, I'm the mayor or excuse me, I'm the sheriff or I'm with Amazon or I'm with a warranty service and they and they scam people out of like their money. Like, you know what I mean? You got to send us gift cards. It's such a bummer yeah. to hear that stuff. Yeah, dude. Like uh, the first first time it happened to me, like I was I was pretty young, um, but when when you get those for the very first time in your life, you you actually you are nervous. You're like, oh, am, yeah. am I in trouble right now? And and that's that's why a lot of those things work for like people who just aren't in the know and and haven't had that happen to them before. Like mm -hmm. you can get information out of people easy. Well, you <laughs> you mentioned like um, niches with YouTube. There, I used to love watching this guy scammer payback. He's like this. He has oh, yeah. voice changers mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And he'll just blue hair, all these the blue hair guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love how I point to my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude. But he's uh he but he's got the voice changers and he's like in their system hacking into their cameras. He goes, I know who you are. And she goes, yeah. What? <laughs> he steals from them too. I think he's oh yeah, there's been several occasions where he goes in and they expose themselves, so he dips in in this in their bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Justice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Those so are Robin those Hood actually. videos to watch. Yeah. Dame, what's going on? What, talk to us. What's going on uh, in your neck of the woods? All right. So I, I just uh, picked out a few fun things, but I, I related them. Well, actually, 
Fun thing. I picked out one fun thing. The other one's uh, kind of depressing. <laughs> uh, but I related them to to real estate. So I was like, cool. Well, wow, look at you, bro, with the show prep. <laughs> Have you, uh, um, Ken? Have you heard of a expo slash convention called Reimagine? I have not. You haven't? Okay. Well, so it's just a uh, it's a real estate convention, um, and it's coming up in September. It's going to be the twenty fourth through the twenty sixth. So if anyone's interested, learn more about real estate networking and all that stuff. Go check it out. It's apparently a really great. A uh, place for anyone in the industry to to network, but yeah, I, I was just uh, going to ask you: Have you been to any expos or any conventions about uh, real estate or property development? I have um, a lot of a lot of actually in Rhode Island, down at Providence Hall, they have a big um, builders conference, and I've gone to several of those. Um, my business, I was kind of forced into building a little bit. Um, there's not enough people doing it. So it yeah. wasn't, you know, I didn't, there was just was such a wide gap of opportunity and they, in, you know, I was already in the industry where I was dealing with more of the rehabs and the holding where it was like, well, I know what type of product I want. I know what type of product my, my guests want. And, um, I'm going to have to stop building it if I want to do it economically. Um, hmm. so it was kind of forced down that road, but you, you, you'll, when you start seeing different products, different, uh, I want to describe an assembly, like how you would a wall or different foundation assemblies or uh, different connections, mechanical connections, you know, and then you get down there and you start shoot, you know, you shoot the breeze with a couple of guys and, um, yeah, been a couple, not, not so much with investing. There's quite a bit of data that's available to us where we sit yeah. and how you consume that, you know, there's, there's so many lanes to pick, right? So, oh, you know, I used to always want to start a breakfast shop. It's like, well, that sounds great, but you know, they don't really make a lot of money. You right. know, yeah, selling yeah. Pancakes. Actually, right <laughs> yeah. Selling pancakes. Like, I love the thought. And I know if I went after that up to opportunity, I would nail it. I'd have yeah. the most golden <laughs> pancakes. All right. Let me tell you, right. Great margins. But the yeah. problem is I'm um, gross in 1500 bucks. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What was that convention called, Dane? It's called Reimagine with an exclamation mm-hmm. mark. because it's Who's hosting it? Um, I'm not sure who's hosting it, actually. I, I, I haven't been there, but I, I just like kind of researched a bit. I was like, what, you know, what conventions are coming up about real estate? And this one came up in California. So Fantastic. Oh, yeah. They do multifamily ones. Yeah. Um, that I've noticed, and then other ones with um, an investing sat- strategy. I've I've never done it. It's called a uh, successful with an S. Sin. Just uh, uh, to comment on that screen you're at, John. It looks like they do it in the same convention hall as Nam. Oh yeah, the sound one you went to, right? Or the technology yeah. one? Yeah, no, it's it's uh it's it's for. Um, AV production and musical instruments and stuff like that, mainly geared towards music um, cool. and sound and stuff like that. But yeah, that's a cool place to go. So them dancing had to do with real estate. <laughs> Is that what that was? It was all, it was just yeah. like how to close deals, but there it was, I think it's a big party as well. Like, it, <laughs> you know, it, it always was. hours. <laughs> yeah. the, the real estate business is in a pretty tough spot right now. You know, when you're borrowing money, between eight to 12%, but you'll have a rate of return. You can, you know, they, they, they describe it as like a cap. Then you got like an EBITDA. All right, I don't want to get you in too much jargon, but it, it's currently negative yielding. If I put mm-hmm. down a dollar, um, I get back less than a dollar, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, with the way rates are prevailing right now, um, it's pretty pretty tough spot in the industry right now. The only thing that's making money is, is buildings that are maybe – in excess of 60 units in my area right now. Ones and twos just aren't feasible. Um, yeah, I've seen some projects up to 16. They're not feasible. So yeah. that's that's kind of a bit what's going on in the market right now. You know, yeah. part of my little claim to fame is I locked in millions of dollars in debt, sub 4%. Beautiful. And, and that didn't really have much to do with building houses or being whatever. It was just, hey, I can borrow money at 4%, but I get back 20, 25% returns. 
Don't have to be, a, you know what I mean? A mathematician yeah. for that one. All right. That's like seventh grade arithmetic, you know? So uh, when the money's loose, you can't be afraid to take it. Take more chances. People are way too conservative, way too conservative. Um, and I see it all the time. I see it with 20 year old kids, 25 year old kids. They're afraid to make some bets and they're not even that right. risky. In my opinion, yeah, a lot of people end up being bullish far too late. You know, it's like after mm-hmm. everyone's spoken about it, then then they start getting bullish. But that's when all the hype's gone and the yeah, GameStop, <laughs> yeah, yeah, GameStop, Bitcoin, yeah, dude, yeah. yeah. It's not about how when you get in the game; it's about how long you're in the game. Ooh, um, and you know, if you the reality is, I've, I've been in the industry now, what thirteen years. When I started out, right, I was just did everything I could do, scratch, save, whatever I do, just to get that first deal. The only reason why I got the deal is because the seller was extremely desperate. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? Made it work. Young. Uh, you'd, I didn't have a lot of liabilities. People really have to take a look at their own personal balance sheet and really distinguish really how much risk they can take. And uh I don't know. I, I hope people stop making more bets. Because we are talking about things a little bit more intense, I had to squeeze this in. Uh, Elon Musk has announced that he is taking Tesla HQ is moving from California to Starbase in Texas. This is coming down after a certain law got passed in California that um, he said, that's it. I'm done with the governor of California. I warned him, which I don't doubt he's probably been on the phone with him. And he's yeah. moving it all in the governor of my current state, Greg Abbott's like, come on, come on, bring that X to Texas. That's what he said. But um, yeah, it's a big, big deal. And HQ uh, will move to Austin. So like he said, all right, you want to mess around? I'm out of here. So that th- is there's so many companies that have moved from California to Texas. Mm-hmm. Crazy, man. Especially like uh, from from the shutdown all the way to to this present year, it's a, it's like a lot of people are are just leaving. I mean, look to at my this. Under, to my understanding, I believe California also has some clawback laws. So even though you still left there, you still want to do business in California and made a little migration, they still hit you up for a little bit. Um, right. To my understanding, I think there's a five year claw back there's you know to, to, to verbatim um what it is but just because you say you're out doesn't mean you're out just yet they they still dig at you for a little bit but you know hey we we know elon isn't thinking about what's going on in the next five or ten years you know his eyes are on mars oh he's right. a gunner yeah. So, yeah you know what's so crazy about that that even phrase claw back i um when i was moving out here we we stopped in new mexico and we actually were talking to a, like a legit rancher mm-hmm. and um, he said he moved uh, from to, to New Mexico from California. And he mentioned that thing about clawbacks. He's like, yeah, they're still getting me for money. Mm-hmm. So yo, Ken explain it to us. What exactly is that? Like, so clawback is just cause you're out. Doesn't mean they're out of your purse. Um, you know, my, the only way I could um, create a similar situation that maybe might be more is, Say if you had somebody act, trying to access Medicaid and they had some cat, you know, you're, when people, they'll, they'll take a piece of real estate and they'll park it inside of a revo- revocable trust or a land trust or something of that nature just to get it out of that person, you know, a personal name. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to access Medicaid, they get a look back now. It used to be three years. It's seven now. And uh-huh. what, well, if, if you're a, single person and um, say it had a half a million bucks in cash. They'll take all the cash and they'll whittle that house down. They'll put a lien on the house all the way down until you're worth 2,500 bucks. So um, those are things you got to think about as you're dealing with these assets where, you know, where, where, where's the money coming from? You know, they, uh, they do all these things. They like to give money away, but so, the money comes from somewhere. Or we'll just print more. <laughs> uh, d- don't get me into that. <laughs> uh, Dane, before we get into, you know, actually talking to Ken a little bit more in depth and getting that knowledge here, download the uplift. What else is going on, Dane? Well, I, I don't have anything that's uplifting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but- no. So I matched a bummer thing with more bummer news. All right, bring it on. Yeah. Well, it, you know, <laughs> look, 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice. There, sad. Okay, I'm sad. Go ahead. You could you could do a laugh track with it as well, but um, all right. This is just more, uh, I guess, factual. It's not really an event that's happening. That's cool. But so it's still going on with real estate. Um, so as of June 2024, this is what I, I read online. Th- there's actually a couple different numbers, but this is the highest one I saw. Um, the median sale price for single family homes in Southern Nevada reached 475000 uh, Crazy. So the medium for that. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a significant, uh, significant increase uh, than over the past couple months. And yeah, I mean, who knows? Like, like Vegas is, Ve- Vegas is developing in good ways because there's there's so many businesses going to be opening up in Vegas. But the housing market is going crazy with just yeah. moving here and inflating the price. Let me see. As of June 2024, uh, Southern Nevada was the so a single family home. Yeah. 475 G's. This is a 7.7% increase from the previous year and is close to the record, the record of 482 set in May of 2022. Wow, that was when stuff was crazy expensive. The crazy thing about that, before we get Ken's take on that, is how, dude, Vegas used to be dirt cheap. People are starting to like, yeah. I don't even think people even forget it anymore, but it used to be like, you go there, you're a lost soul. Now they get the pro teams. It's, they have somewhat of an economy going on. They have different businesses moving to Nevada, but it's weird that like now it's it's grown this much. But uh, what do yeah. you think? Cause Ken, you've had your different opinions about Vegas and homes in Vegas. What do you think about that? For and, uh, sorry, what, while you're there, John, can, can oh, you sorry. look up what, what's the median income for a single family? That's telling. Okay. Very important metric. But Ken, what are your thoughts about prices in uh, Vegas right now? I'm not a large, you know, huge fan of a spending, well, investing in Vegas. I, I have concerns about resources in that area. I'm a 30 year investor, just the water issues. Um, hmm. We do, you know, from what I know in Las Vegas is there's, there's still plenty of uh, sand and dust around there that you can build upon. I think the issue is the accessibility um, to the natural resources that we need to survive, especially when we are faced with uh, weekly, you know, bouts of 115 plus degree weather. Um, these are real things that we have to think about on where you spend your money and how you spend it around the ocean. You're seeing a lot of places, and I'm seeing this in the Cape Cod as we speak, homes that would previously sell for Two and a half, three million bucks, six hundred grand, mm. eight hundred grand. Yeah, they're, they're uninsurable. Now, if you can't get water, it's not a habitat. So until that last drop is gone, you know, I, I just don't, you know, I just don't see the big plan after the fact. I'm, I'm not trying to be uh, super, you know. Vegas is, you know, hey, it's growing. It's great. It's opportunity, a low tax, you know, all, all that other stuff. But uh, can it hold? Uh, what, what, how many people are in Vegas as we speak? Three million? Uh, yeah. It's, it, last I checked, it was a, it was past three million. So, and that was wow. years ago. <laughs> so if we're at a deficit, you know, a rate, a, a deficit rate as we speak now with the population, and let's say you have another 25% growth, you, the, the water supply is going to depreciate probably twofold on top of that, that rate of yeah. rate of loss. So, you know, there's got to be some real hard lines drawn in the sand, literally, mm. uh, because <laughs> the water mark is going down. It's a wrap. Well, I'll say I, this. I, I will, I will yeah. say, uh, <laughs> I know you're about to defend the Lake Mead, aren't you? Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Bring on the fire, Dane. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> No, I, I I will say this: it, it's gone uh, back up to where it was before we had to send a bunch of water to like California and other places, mm-hmm. and we had that huge dive, and and that was that was horrible. Like, cause it, we used to go out like to Lake Mead on the boat and stuff like that, um, and I know that's not the main purpose of it, but like it was horrible. Like even going around there, there's sandbanks popping up everywhere the shorelines change in every single week. So yeah, like we, we definitely felt it. And, um, you know, Vegas has always taken 
some kind of steps in, into like preserving water with like, you know, lawns being converted into, you know, rocks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, like l luckily we, we are back up. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's still a huge concern, a huge problem. And like Lake Mead's not just Nevada, it's, it's California, it's Arizona. Yes. Yeah. So a lot yeah, of hands in the honey hole. Thing. Well, if, regarding rights to the Colorado, is that correct? As the Colorado River? Yeah. Um, whose rights supersede Nevada's? So when you have accessibility, right, there's a water like authority, correct? And yeah. there's so mm -hmm. much appropriated to that area, Southern California and all those things. Now, the question is, is, you know, when the resource is gone, like, oh, hey, we dodge a bullet now. Hey, I have a 30 year view. You know, I plan to be on here for 30 years. Um, Dan, you, you, you've seen this firsthand, get wiped out, you know, when it happens twice, three times, right? Mm. Um, you know, there's, there's houses in the Carolinas and stuff like that where they've been flooded three or four times. When do you just pick up and leave? You know, yeah. so as these things keep happening and, you know, it will create an immeasurable amount of deflation when you have something that nobody wants. So for the time being, it's all right. Real estate's great because you can short the dollar on it. I would be cautious from a 30 year view, mm. um, spending large sums of money uh, in real estate in that area. The one thing before we move on, it, the wild thing about Las Vegas, and, and I lived there on and off for 10 years, is like, what's the permits? Like, if you drive around the outskirts of the city, it's nonstop, like new apartment complex, building a uh, new community, boom, boom, boom. And it's like yeah. just growing. And it's like, who's signing off on this? Like, you know, we get all our money from Lake Mead. But yeah, no, the last, the, yeah, no. But the last two winters were crazy. Like the Rockies is what feeds the Colorado mm -hmm. River. And it's been like literally going up, which is crazy, but they keep building and building. And I had a stat up on uh, something. It was like Las Vegas is one of the most water efficient cities. Like what you use goes down into the treatment plant, gets, mm -hmm. and then you it comes right back out your shower. It's like a little sketchy to think about, but uh, yeah. And, yeah uh, we're, we're doing everything I know possible to you know, keep, keep the water flowing. So keep it flowing, baby. Yeah, keep yeah. it going. But hey, I, I, I hope it, right, you know, I hope it keeps going, flourishing, all that, and those things. It's just, you gotta, right, measure, measure risk. Um, no, for sure. yeah. And, you know, you have your, your macro standpoint, you know, you can, you can work as hard as you want, it, you know, sometimes. And um, if, if there's no market, it's irrelevant. Yeah. yeah and, and, and just dealing, dealing with, you know, just things that are physically possible. That there's always a, a limit behind how, much a city can grow whether it's like the space that mm -hmm. it exists in or it's the resources around it, it vegas I, I think it's it's profitable enough for the state's government and stuff like that that we'd figure out how to transport water to mm -hmm. us if, if you know that was the well, end that's good. but yeah. i'd love to i'd love to hear a plan and that yeah, would mean no, a yeah. lot that would mean a lot if you're going to spend large amount you know you say hey like this gentleman or lady or company, right? Just built 164 units. Hey, mm. do I hold 51% of this building? So I still have control. Do I sell 49% of them? All these little, these are, hey, if they're selling the whole building and they're just turning it, you know, um, people keep good things. Yeah. So keep that in mind when you're looking at buildings like that. How much did they keep? Ken Parley's time is precious, and so is Dane Davis's. And let me tell you something, my schedule is busy, baby. I got a lot going on. <laughs> so let me tell y'all to diving into the mind of Ken Parley, real estate guru, is going to be our co of the week. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. And our quote yeah. of the week is the best investment on earth is earth. Mm. Lewis Glickman. He's uh, apparently a real estate. Well, he was a real estate mogul. It's weird. He doesn't have a Wikipedia, but uh, some things said he's still running at 94, but I love that. And uh, Ken, 
Parley, you are our expert and our guest today. Right off the rip, what are your first impressions of our quote of the week? Real, real stuff. You want to invest in real things. There's a, you know, when, when I talk about speculation and taking risk and realizing, starting with tangible things. That's a great place to start when you want to start storing value, building wealth, is you, you, you want to have tangible things. Mm. And you want tangible assets, things that do not cost you money. Mm. Those, 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 that's what you want. You know, it, it, if earth, right? Uh, you know, let's start with a farm. Put it in there, you plow the fields, you take the corn out, you keep it going so it produces. If you have a piece of land that's barren and dry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Dane, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to take stabs at, <laughs> at, at Vegas. It just, it oh, just was easy. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. <laughs> you know, it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> dry, barren land yeah. lacking H2O. <laughs> Dude, same way where I'm at. Uh, you, you know, we got we got plenty of alcohol and plenty of gambling. <laughs> yeah. oh, place plenty of jack. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I agree with that. It definitely um land land value, location, and you know, soil richness, all that yeah, like that that can equate to it being very useful or completely useless. And mm-hmm. um to, uh, to piggyback on the quote of the week, um Let's see how, how to go. It was um, land is something that every everyone wants, and they're not making more of it. So it is one of the best mm-hmm. investments you can make. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Dane, ask me this. Be like, yo, Johnny Snowball, who is Ken Parley? Yo, Johnny Snowball, yes, who is Ken Parley? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, who the heck are we listening to? Who is this guy, right? Say you're listening to in your car in Colorado. You're like, yeah, okay. I mean, I like these guys, but who's this guest, Ken? Who is this guy? Well, let me tell you something. Well, number one, he is a family man, right? A family man first. I think that's top tier. He's a friend of many. He is a real estate developer, a real estate buyer and seller. He stepped in as a general contractor. He's delegated many of jobs. Uh, I like to consider him a jack of all trades. He's active in his local uh, Boston suburb uh, community and government, local community. Mm -hmm. And he's a driven dude and a loyal friend. That's who Ken Parley is to me. And I want to share with the audience how I met Ken Parley because it's forever burnt in my head. The year was about, I think it was either 2005 or 2006. We Mm -hmm. both, I went to a party at his house the night before with some other people, mutual friends. We we were young, okay? (laughs) I like young. So we went pretty hard. The next morning, I left my place and I saw young Mr. Parley walking down the street randomly. I was like, hey, man, uh, do you want to ride or something? He goes, nah, man, uh, I'm just going for a walk. I was, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm just going for a walk. Or I, or I was just like, hey, man, what are you doing out here? Because, you know, you don't really see it. And that's when I found the wiseness. He wanted to get in tune with nature. But the funny thing is I think he had like a New York State fake ID and we needed him to buy us like beer or something. So we're like, hey, Nick, can you buy us some beer from the sketchy liquor store? <laughs> and uh, the rest is history. But that's who Ken Parley is, Dane. Nice. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm a I'm a mumbling random dude walking down Atwell's Avenue in Providence at seven in the morning after throwing a kegger so that I can make some friends <laughs> in a new city. Oh, that, that's good. Are you throwing a kegger, that's good for him. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, it was a good time. It's different diff, different time. Definitely tell that. But yeah. Uh that was a nice city. Very fortunate that Gabriel and I ended up hooking up and uh I tell you what, we were roommates. What six months later? Oh yeah, oh, wow. nice. How many years were we roommates? Uh, Seven. <laughs> Before you tried to steal my girl. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, there was a love triangle situation going on. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. In in Gabriel's mind, there was a love triangle. That's correct. <laughs> So yeah, and we lived together for uh, a couple of years. The whole the whole relationship thing was I was dating this girl, and like literally she walked out on me, and I was like, and he went down to like bring her back because he's such a good friend. <laughs> but I thought he was like trying to steal her. Probably drunk. <laughs> I was drunk for the last thirty years of my life. Who knows? But so I stuck my 
whole body out the window, which looked down to them talking. I go, oh, yeah, trying to steal my girl, huh? <laughs> well, we ain't boys no more. <laughs> so, That's when we became friends forever. He tried to steal my bo- my girl, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's a foot in your mouth situation right there. Uh, like, well, the dude trying to help you out, and you're accusing him. <laughs> dude, we so our first, no this is our second apartment. I actually came across it because I was like, "How much are apartments now in Rhode Island?" I got to share this with you, and I'll share, dude. So, uh, Dave, is it in that same building? 2008. Uh, this is when we lived in this place above a liquor store. And uh, it's twelve hundred bucks, right? It's twelve hundred. Look how they totally rehabbed it. This is one fifty Acorn Street. It's now going for twenty one hundred. But oh, dude, wow. this this used to be a liquor store, and we lived on the third floor. Mm-hmm. This was. Uh, let me see if I can find. Oh, okay. But yeah, they totally redid it. Now it's all like stainless and stuff. But bro, that we used. Nice. To, this was Ken's room right here. My room was right here. And the, there was like another, it was a closet. There's a we weird had a room, room a closet room. We just stuck somebody in there for <laughs> This was my room. <laughs> Stuff was, no, that was Ken's room. <laughs> no, I think that was mine, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I had the two windows. Yeah. Stuff went down. Oh, that, oh, that, is that, that's one of the windows <laughs> you yelled at him about <laughs> it. Oh, no, no. This, uh, that was the unit, the apartment before, but look how nice the bathroom is. Oh, right that's a big upgrade. I don't look remember. Look at that, looking dude. Like steam that. shower now. It did not look like this when we. I don't remember looking place. like that. It, it looks bougie, man. I like yeah. it. Oh, bro. It wasn't, it wasn't much food <laughs> not going like on there back then. <laughs> we, but, we, but you know, a Bentley box out front. Oh, <laughs> Rolls Royce, bro. Oh, oh, yeah. Was it a Rolls Royce? Two-tone. Frickin' Fan Italians. Baby. I love them. <laughs> you know, they, they got rid of the liquor store, so that's kind of a depreciation of value, I think. That's... <laughs> That was a shady place. That was a good time, though. That that was um that was next to the place that we first lived, and and that place we all like used to get drunk and go on the roof like an oh. icy roof. It was it was crazy, man. Somehow we made it through. Triple keggers. <laughs> oh yeah. Fire extinguishers going off. Dan, did you <laughs> do you remember keg parties? Like, do you remember any epic keg parties when you were I don't know eighteen to twenty four? Or did you guys say something that? ridiculous like? 10 or something like that. Nah, nah. Uh, yeah, uh, we we had, I wasn't like super bad when I was a teenager, but I did sneak out to a few parties. But yeah, we like occasionally there'd be a keg there, but it was, it was mainly just freaking like, like natty ices and just stuff oh, like that. Like, yeah, yeah nat- natty light and uh, yeah, so it wasn't great beer, but it was great times. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great beer, but it was great times. That, yeah, that's that's the ad, man. That's the ad for for Nat. Is it Wild. really? No. Oh, <laughs> sold. I Go bought ahead. it. I, I'm thinking it was. Yeah. He, Dave and I talked about that last week, bro. We used to be able to swing, man. Like those just go <laughs> hard. Like I had some uh, white claws, I don't know, last week or something. I, dude, the next day I was like, oh, my head. But I mean, listen, you can hop right back on that horse. But I, <laughs> but I need to tell you about, dude. So at one point we had an apartment at the top floor of a different building. There was four units, right? Mm-hmm. And the doors all opened to each other. We somehow had all of us have a keg in our apartments. So there was a four kegger just <laughs> like madness in uh Rolling Rock, it was 70 bucks for a, a keg. I don't, no, I don't think it was that. I think we got like Jenny Light. I think it was like 45 bucks a barrel. Oh, fantastic. Um, wow. And I, I think this was when MySpace was a thing. Oh, yeah. And we literally said, girls drink for free. <laughs> Just message, <laughs> serial message. We, um, oh, man. Remember, we uh, we rolled all the furniture in the living room in the bedrooms. So we didn't even have access to our bedrooms. We took all the couches and we put them in there. And we made our entire living space a dance party. Oh, dude. So you went in there, it was lights, and smoke, and we had s- speakers that were, you know, probably four and a half feet tall. Remember my, my Nakamichi amp? We had that thing thumping. Oh. We, uh, oh yeah. awesome. <laughs> Fog machine and everything. Yeah, oh, it was a good yeah. time. It was a good <laughs> time. Now, you looking back as, you know, you would own a building like that these days, and you, what would you do? If you saw tenants like that, like, uh, well, you know, you really know what much you can do if, if you express to a tenant, a space over a prolonged period of time and you signed a contract, good luck. That's part of the business. You 
you wrote out a check with not only your mouth legally to say that that's their distinguished space. It's not for you to dictate what really happens inside that space. Mm. Wow. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of take that in stride. It's, it's not yours. It's legally theirs for that period. Uh, and I, I'm sure, you know, the fire department would have a different opinion. <laughs> um, yeah. But from a landlord standpoint uh, in the state of Massachusetts, I would have no bearing to do anything or have mm. any real repercussions um, to that tenant. But I, I would call the police and the fire department to say, hey, by the way, this dwelling is made for six people max, right? Yeah. I know, boring, boring. You changed, And there's man. 43 kids in this apartment, bumping the and floor. grinding, dancing and like <laughs> Nelly, you know? It's getting hot in here. Yeah. Yo. All early, e, you know, techno EDM stuff. You guys right. have seen it. They've got, they've got three kegs. They're lame. We had four. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys have seen videos, right? Of like house parties where like literally the floor caves in. Like, I bet we were oh, testing yeah. those. What are they called? Like joists or whatever that the are the problem beam. floors. Like we, yep. across, we, we were testing those, dude. We were on the fourth floor with literally person to person just yeah, dancing. Term- like this is, um, Every time we touch, boom, <laughs> just jumping the up and down. You use deck, you know, that's the deck. So you you take the walls up, you'd sit on the top plate, and then everything sits on top of that. And that whole plane, that whole floor is the deck. Mm-hmm. Now you have some post ups and post downs to deal with that bouncing issue. But that building was, you know, kind of old. Yeah. So, you know, some, but it definitely was not rated for what was going on in there uh, <laughs> it was, what was going on in there it was you saying was it wasn't a concert venue uh yeah oh I my gosh know. i found i found it i found not our unit dude oh my gosh all right one With more the basement one, one, one. I got the no. this is where this is the first place ken and i live dude check this place out oh one it's the actual place. it's the mccoy one oh, nice well see all these places look way nicer now like look how much he's getting for this place uh two bed one bath Oh, what did we say. pay? Like seven hundred bucks or something? One twenty town. Was- ho- oh, town home. This must oh, have been. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This place is still a dump. Yeah. <laughs> this was the fourth floor. I've been in this apartment many of times. Yeah. Bunch of Johnson and Wales kids. Yo, see this roof here, uh, mm-hmm. Dane? Yeah. See how there's no guard rails or anything? No. Were Were you on that roof? We were. We, the <laughs> door in this room opened up to this. During the winter, so we had a bunch of drunk people four full stories up. <laughs> you, you'd come walking down there and you'd see kids just sitting on the ledge with their feet hanging over the edge. Dude, uh, I, 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 I recall a party scary. where a couch went off that roof as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There had to be, right? Yeah, a couch just <laughs> a couch, had, someone's to mattress. couch had to go. <laughs> and the best time for it to go was, you know, after two in the morning. Nice. That's uh, legendary. Yeah, it was. It was. And that's just stuff that's going to be with us forever, man. But enough of the chit chat with the craziest. But when you when we lived together, he worked for a company. But when you you had a job, you had health benefits, but you decided I want to get involved with real estate. So, yo, to start us off, bro, what made you get into this? Why? Why didn't you want What made you take the risk from going from, all right, dude, I'm getting a paycheck every week of the healthy one at that well, a boat mechanic or yacht mechanic with benefits money. And then you're like, I want to be my own boss or what made you do it? What's going on? A deep, deep recession. In 2008, 2009, um, I recall working in a factory um, that had close to a thousand workers at it. It was a large um, boat manufacturer. Uh, in a matter of three weeks, I started to whittle down from a thousand to about thirty. Um, yeah, it was it was you know blight. It, it was a very tough thing to see as a young adult, and you know, seeing those people. And then when you know they took us back to the office and they went to lay off my foreman, which trained me and stuff. And I said, "You can't let Tony go. You let Tony go, I go." And they said, "Hey, there's the door." You know, oh, oh. I, I was tired anyways. They beat me up. Um, so, Your hours were crazy there, man. Yeah, well, there was a lot of 80 hour weeks. You know, they owned you. Um, I'd probably come home, what, every other weekend. I'd, I was living like a sailor, 
but uh, what the rent was four hundred. I didn't have a car payment, mm. um, and I was probably making seventy or eighty thousand a year. So, wow, were you really? Yeah. Well, Damn. with the overtime, with the overtime, you know, because it would add up. I I remember working on Easter to try to get double time and a half. Wow. So I worked Easter, and those were things that you do to get ahead. It's hard. You choose your heart, right? Everything is hard. You just got to choose it. It's mm. hard to save or it's hard to be a debtor. Uh, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to watch your diet and it's also hard to be a glutton. Um, mm. So choose your heart. Oh, my man. I love that. Right off the rip with a, that should have been the quote of the week from our guest himself. <laughs> but what made you transfer? Like, okay, so you got laid off. You stood it up for your boy, Tony. Mm -hmm. you, I think you mentioned at the start of the pod that it was someone was desperate. What was the transition to actually get into real estate? I had a friend that was struggling with his auto service business that he had several children and he was going to go under. Um, so I left that, that ZF sphere when I left there, you know, I was, I was very familiar with German, German parts and manufacturing and engineering. Um, Cause that's kind of what I specialized in. So I went there to help him out with his business. I flushed it with a little cash. And then we were doing that, the software business with the APR, um, which was very rewarding, um, which led into this property, which was a old gasoline service station. And, um, you know, we were paying rent and I proposed to my partner at that time. Why don't we, you know, go in on it? And, um, he didn't have the resources at the time. So I told him, I said, I think I was going to take a stab at it. And it actually kind of fractured us a little bit because he's like, oh, you know, oh, I'm going to pay you rent. And I was like, well, it's going to go to somebody. They were asking half a million for the building, I think, when we began with it. And uh, I think I offered him, well, maybe 180 grand. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Good luck getting a call back. You offer somebody 180,000. Um, but then you're driving by it for a year and nothing's going on. There was a development next door where it would have been that maybe that value, maybe that building would have been worth a half a million if, if that was synergized into that deal, but they didn't make a deal and the guy slept on it. And there was some um, contamination issues as well. So there was a lot of risk, a lot of risk. That, that was the first uh, property. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, 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 hmm. Yeah. We, we did, um, you know, I was pretty flush there with the, the software business. We made quite a bit of money on that. They, you know, at that time, forums were growing. Like, this was a burgeoning industry. You know, I think the iPhone 3 just came out. Um, you know, Blackberries, all right, Nextels were still prevalent. Um, and you'd go on and go on forums, and we were selling software, which, you know, we played about 250 a chip, but we sell them for 599 so... We know the margins that software presents. So we really worked on growing that business. We did very well. Um, I stuffed quite a bit of dough in my pocket. And then I, I wanted to, I had to put it somewhere, right? You know, how many cars have I owned? Um, you know, the only person I know that owned more cars than me to that point was you, Gabriel. Um, <laughs> right? We were big car guys. We love cars. Um, mm -hmm. So what I would do consistently is, you know, where do you store your value? Uh, you don't do it in dollar bills. That's the first place you start. Um, you store your money in your craft. If you're an electrician, you buy a lot of copper wire. Okay. Mm. If you're a plumber, you buy a lot of copper pipe or PEX. Uh, if you're an S, you know, in the excavation business, you buy a big machine. Um, yeah. And that that's your store value. You do not hold on to dollar bills. It's a currency. It's a means of exchange. Sadly, it's not a good store of value. But it, whatever you can do to use your craft, take that currency and piggyback it with what you're specializing in in that moment to create those synergies, you can uh, make some money. So, you know, I'd be flipping cars constantly, you know, and, you know, you go from five cars to seven to, I, I feel like there's a point there where I might have had 16, 17 cars. Uh, yeah. Remember, I had all the Mercedes, the cream puffs and the... I, I, Constantly, people could not repair, could afford to repair, repair their vehicles. And part of my niche was, is, oh, okay, somebody doesn't want to spend $2,000 to repair a $5,000 car. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd take it. I'd put 400 in parts for it. I'd fix it up. I'd detail it. And I'd retail it for 5500 But I would store them. And I'd wait until tax season. Um, so I'd, I'd usually bankroll six, seven, eight, nine cars. And then once tax season came out, they all went for sale. Mm, mm. I love that. They all went for sale because everybody's flush with cash. They just got yep. their returns. Their car's a piece of trash and they need something that needs a sticker. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Wait until mm. tax season. Mm. Yeah, you, you got to know your market. You have to know your demographics. You have to focus. You have to be hyper focused on what you're trying to achieve at a time. There's, you, you, you know, this, this, again, there's so many opportunities out there. So many opportunities. It's just, you got to pick a lane mm. and there's nothing wrong with swaying in another lane a little bit, but you got to pick a lane and you pick a lane and you can pivot. There's nothing wrong with pivot. I love pivoting because I get tired of what I'm doing. You know, it wasn't just cars, you know, we, I used to fix washer and dryers, dirt bikes, whatever I get my hand hand on. Um, mm-hmm. that I could put value in, input value into and then relay it to somebody else. Hmm. Well, you went to school to be a like marine mechanic, right? But that Correct, gave yeah. you that allowed you to literally you mentioned fixing washer and dryer. So just like anything else, take it apart. Oh, it's, it needs a new belt. Uh take yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And that probably having that background probably helped you out with everything. Pro- but you're like one of those were you one of those dudes that would like take something apart as a little kid to see how it works? Or one hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent, yeah. The um, very mechanically inclined. If my parents, you know, said, "Hey, you, you know, you should be an engineer, or you should be a lawyer," and the resources were available for you to do such a thing, you know, probably would would see fit. But uh, my mother was a waitress, um, you know, at Spuds while she was going to school to. Uh, Bentley, you know, trying to get her a degree in accounting. And my father was a firefighter. There was, um, you know, arguments over electricity. Um, So you grow up fast. And I think that's really important for people to get maybe a little more primitive, or or I'm sorry, not primitive, primal. Hmm. Um, So that they can, I don't know if levity is the correct term, but um, to speak volumes of, of, of what it takes, um, to survive on your own. When you have that hustler mentality, I think it doesn't matter if you're living on the streets, you'll hustle bottles of water to tourists, or if you're living in a mansion, you're still going to have that hustler mentality. That's like in your bones, dude. And that's honestly, dude, that's a blessing to have because not everyone has it. Like you can't necessarily teach that. Listen, you can, by putting people Mm -hmm. against it through adversity and stuff like that. But so we got the place we're lined up. We got a couple bucks. We're wheeling, dealing cars, 16. We got Mercedes going in and out. Mm-hmm. But when, so you already did commercial. When were you like, all right, let's get into, let's get into the next big piece of God's earth. What was the next step? Talk to me, man. Well, we, we closed on that. They, we were reapproached um, at a later date. Um, and I bet every dime I, I've had, like I always done. So we closed on that building, and um, after dealing with that closing, the broker who I still currently work with, he told me I'm in the wrong business. And just like anything, right, if you're trading peanuts and then you're trading washer and dryers, dirt bikes, then cars, what's that next metric of store value that adds some more zeros on it, right? If you think about dimes, you get dimes. If you think about dollars, you get dollars. Hmm. So let's start thinking about dollar bills with a lot of zeros on them. So, Amen. So, <laughs> yeah. So once we got in that, um, I got that deal done. And then, you know, now they, the term they use is creative financing. Um, at that time, there uh, wasn't the resources that we have access to now. But really, it was it was kind of the, the, the creation of um, creative financing when I financed my home. My first, my first home, my first primary residence, I, I did with creative financing. No, nobody's going to lend an entrepreneur money until mm. they have money. Mm. So it takes a while mm. to, you know, then once you have it, then they don't leave you alone. Um, Cause they know you can grow extremely fast um, as an entrepreneur and, and, and working on your own. Right. 
right? You want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go with a team. So if, if you start off, right, uh, there's, a, there's a great book, um, Peter Thiel, uh, Z, uh, Zero to One, I believe it is. I think that's a great read. If you're starting off from zero and the whole concept of that is really what's that rate of growth from zero to one. If we went to point zero, zero, one to point zero, one to point one to point five, right? That is extreme growth. Hmm. And it's important to realize that if you have nothing, you're ahead of the game. Um, you, you're not in debt. You know, like if you don't have a lot of yeah. liabilities, Really, think about how flexible you are and, yeah, and the chances yeah. that you can take. And you can go from zero to one. And then you go from one to ten. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> the rate of growth uh, from being an entrepreneur, it's it can be pretty uh, – very rewarding. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Um, just since we're, we're talking about, like, your first um, property, yes. like – if if you if you had to invest in your first property today, like let's say residential, um, to do either a rental property or flip that property, what what's like some good advice for someone just starting out who doesn't really have any financial backing behind them? Like how could they go about that to get their first investment property? Great question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, you get a house hack. Now, it, just like with my first home, um, I didn't even own it yet. Uh, and I was in the basement refinishing the apartment to limit my liabilities. Hmm. Right? It's not an asset if it's costing me money. So yeah. the first thing I'm thinking about, oh, great. I just took on a bunch of debt. Uh, my payment is $1,600 a month. Um, and my business is capital intensive because that's how I, you make me, you know, that's how I, I, I double down. So if I, if I remove that liquidity from my business, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of riding on a horse that, that, you know, hasn't drank water for five or 10 days. You know, you, you can't, you, you can't do that. So I, I can't cripple my cash flow. Mm -hmm. So would I spend 12,000? Um, to create eight hundred dollars worth of income a month, and then I drop that liability from sixteen hundred to eight hundred. At that time, it makes sense because you know you're putting that into the building, so it's stored value, and now you're creating cash flow off that stored value and mitigating that liability. So that the house hacking aspect of it is, is okay. I, I use that space. We talked previously about space, the cost of space. Mm -hmm. And and what are things cost that space? But hey, we want things in there that produce to use that space. Hmm. And I I would even consider and um, you team up with somebody that maybe does have the the uh, or the access to credit, and you're gonna have to have some skin in the game. You know, yeah. you're gonna show up going, hey, I'm gonna get in this house. Uh, I have ten dollars. <laughs> you know, it, it's not gonna you you got. You can go far in this country. Just you got to save up five or 10 grand. Mm -hmm. You got to, you, mm -hmm. you got to get through that hard. Um, mm -hmm. And when people say, I, I, I kind of laugh it off because people say, Oh, I can't save. And I'm like, well, you're wearing air forces. So <laughs> right. I don't think you really understand the concept of saving. Yeah. Damn, no, yeah. And, and, and 10,000 is, it's pretty, it's pretty doable. Uh, for the most part, if you have a decent paying job and, and you just, even if, if you say, Hey, I want to invest this in three years, right? You mm -hmm. take three years to come up with 10 grand to buy your way into like starting real estate, maybe with a partner or whatever, going on the house with them. Um, it's, yeah, it's definitely doable. I, I just think, you know, the people that say that that's not possible, um, sometimes it's like a, they're, they don't think of long-term things. It's, it's all short-term stuff, but you, you really have to play the long-term game when you're buying into anything. Like um, my business is sa same thing. It's a lot of uh, investment upfront mm -hmm. and very, very little uh, payoff. But once you own you know, your items, once you own like 
speakers and mixers and stuff like that then they start making money but it takes years and it's taken me years to just develop like you know a decent line of products where i can actually put on a show for people and and charge them a decent amount of money for it so the essence of the real estate investment is where if you have a building that's a half a million dollars um and let's say you can put down three percent let's say it's a million let's just make these numbers and you put down the thirty thousand dollars now if the rate of inflation is at three percent that means after one year the house is worth one million and thirty thousand dollars so if you just had that house on your name right there you just doubled your store value you took thirty thousand and now it's worth or or that stored value in the home is sixty thousand so you just doubled your money you doubled yeah. your money you you have to deal with the liability the mortgage the interest the taxes uh yeah um you know rain is coming inside the door you know we gotta cut this thing out replace it um which you know dealing with all those risks but if you can get yourself in a position where you're cash flowing to a degree or you're mitigating that liability and it, never mind if we start getting into the aspect you know the aspect of inflation where it's like you know you can really snowball into something crazy um so it's 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 the only way that you can re you can double your money really quick and the counter argument i would have to say oh what if i fall on my face and i can't pay it in the state of massachusetts you can live there for two years and not pay them so mm. if your mortgage is forty five thousand dollars hey in my eyes you're up 60 grand mm. uh if you put down 30 and you consume ninety thousand dollars worth of housing mm. i don't know this is seventh yeah. grade math i want to go real what's quick the risk? what's the risk right think mm. about that yeah i know for sure what he said about um that's so crazy First of all, I really like that you shared that. It's like, hey, man, you, you should have five to 10 grand stacked up. And you also said that zero, because believe, there's, I mean, America is like a debtor's nation. Like everyone's in debt, whether it's their cars or credit cards or whatever it is, like bad debt. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, yeah, hey, if you're at zero, you're in actually a pretty good spot. But you mentioned that how hard it is to get from just to that five to 10 grand. But same oh. thing could be said for a YouTube channel or a podcast. Like mm -hmm. they say, I hear that from all the gurus with social media, like to get to that next tier of like a thousand subscribers, it's going to be a grind. And then it gets a lot easier. But then it's like a, a domino effect. But I, I don't know if that's for yeah. real, but yeah, uh, zero, it, to, zero to one, zero to yeah, one, it, excuse it, me. Every everything everything snowballs you know it's it, like if, if you start gaining traction and momentum like you know it's it's hard to stop that mm -hmm. that kind of uh, momentum like regardless of uh I, like just in the case of a youtube channel like it could be everyone's watching you because they love you or everyone's watching you because they hate you but you know <laughs> you're, it, anything that happens it, it's it's going viral like the more popular you get so yeah I I agree with that. Ken, do you think that uh, shows like on TLC and um, you know all HGTV and all these like flipping houses? I know they're not as many as they were before the crash in 08, 09, But do you think that a lot of people become like armchair quarterbacks and they see everyone else do it and they aren't really willing to a take on the risk, but b one thing that you know this isn't a I'm not trying to kiss your butt the whole time, but it's, you're our guest, baby, so you deserve it. The fact that you will go around the job site and you'll learn, you'll network with all the people you got to deal with, but you'll you have no problem picking up scraps out of the driveway for the guy to come in. You have. Do you feel like all those shows people think that oh, I'll just invest some money and flip a place and get paid, not realizing the hard work and the willing to get your hands dirty? Do you think that those shows just really don't show the real grind that? that it's involved with? I would not ask anybody to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Mm, so that's a good place to start. Um, you know, you treat people how you want to be treated. And that's where it's at. I, I, it's very important to me that I spend time with the people that I work with. Amen. Because there's more to life 
there's just more to life than just trying to see that extra zero in the bank account. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to wake up. Hey, if you're not having a, you know, if you're not having a good conversation and a couple laughs, I don't know. Why am I doing all this crap? Yeah. Um, big facts. And, you know, I've, I've, I've grown to care uh, quite a bit for the team uh, that I work with. Now, off of those, cha those, those shows that you described, um, those are very inspiring for me personally Ooh. um because okay. when i see them they would say oh hey we do this and whatnot and they're inputting store value and they're trading it to get it out right big arbitrage that's uh, that would probably be my my top uh just job description is um or, you know, is, is I'm, I'm a bit of a king of arbitrage. We're taking something. And the best way to describe that is um, you go to an apple cart and somebody's selling an apple for a dollar. And then I go down a mile down the road and there's another apple cart and they're selling it for two dollars. Now, I'd buy the apple for a dollar. Then I'd walk three quarters of a mile down the street next to the guy that's selling it for two. And I'd sell it for a dollar seventy five. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's... That's something that I've always done is when you look at markets and you see voids, you got to know when to go towards them. A bit of my, my scatterbrain there with the um, those shows and those channels. Um, they were very inspiring. For me. I used to love the gentleman um, that used to do it out of Connecticut. Um, they had some flip show on whatever TLC or something. But the, the biggest issue that I had when I went to, say, for example, flip my first house is after I input that energy, that store of value and that effort, I'm trading it for paper. Hmm. I didn't like that. Um, so I, I, I don't personally like to trade my time for paper. Uh, I, I did pick up, I'm, I'm building right now for uh, a family um, for paper, uh, but he's a firefighter. She's a teacher. I've known her for 30 years. They have four kids. They live on a road next to a highway. Uh, my friends, I mean, my, my daughter is friends with their daughter. I'm willing to share my time for a family like that. So, of course. you know, you, you got to find out little, little green shoots of things that you're willing to do and, and why you want to do them. Um, and it shouldn't be just for the paper. So, you know, the, the, the term they use now is burr, right? Buy, rehab, renovate. Um, refinance that didn't exist when I started. Um, so I was the tip of the spear. I just didn't talk about it. And I would input that, uh, those resources in my time. And um, I would just hold on to it. And I'd ca try to ca I'd cash flow it. So, and it's, it's hard because every dime I've had, uh, every, you know, and I, I still do it today, where before I'd be like, oh, I just want 50 grand. You know, and then life's good. I don't have to worry about anything. But as soon as I had $49,000 in my account, I already had another contract signed. And, you know, keep yeah. doubling down. Let's grow. Let's have some fun. Yeah, I, I know how that is because, uh, you know, it's, it, it, for, for me, a lot of what I've done, um, as bad as it can be sometimes, you know, I've, I'll get into a bunch of credit card debt, buying equipment and stuff like that. Um, and then once I get out of it, you know, I've got more buying power. So I just I double down, expand the business, grow it. And it's important to do that because if, if you're not doing that, then you're not competing and you're not doubling your your money, basically, eventually. I, I still do credit card arbitrage to this day. They beg or marigold send me anything in the mail. Hey, um, 18 months, 0%, 3% transaction fee. All right. Yeah, I got credit line of 80 grand. I write myself out a check for 80 grand. Awesome. Cost me 3%. All right. I have a lot of vessels that can give me returns of 18 to 25%. Um, it is negligent of me to uh, not grab that arbitrage, right? I'm paying 3% of yeah. 18 months. If I'm getting 18 to 25% annually, right? So off of their money, off of their 80, I might be making 25%. That's $20,000. Um, yeah. That's a lot of money. It should not be neglected. And some people would say that's extremely risky. I wouldn't do that unless I had another 80 somewhere else. So, 
Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to get too 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 deep into terms with what you do with store value and not how how you use use your money, but I am never net long the dollar and i use that term long that means that you have more of it than you have less of it so um i would be in a position where it's like well if i had a half a million dollars in cash i would want a half a million dollars in debt just to be balanced Hmm. right just to be balanced so i would rather be in a position where say i had three hundred thousand in cash and then i had a half a million in debt because I don't want to be long the dollar because, you know, we can have a conversation at a later date of what the Federal Reserve and the Treasury um, does with the dollar bill. But one thing I know is they are uh, racking up debt. And I'm going to coincide with how their balance sheet is. So yeah. I, I actively look at their balance sheet to see, you know, how short they are of the dollar. Just to wrap up that statement is there is the essence of real estate. So not only are we long real estate, right? We own it, Mm -hmm. but we're also short the dollar because we have a mortgage on it. And as it ages and as inflation takes its place, we pay it back with watered down money. You know, the dollar that I'm going to pay it back with 10 years later is worth less than what I borrowed it for. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's it. You're long real estate and you're short the dollar. You just got to keep a couple of them around for the hard times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. That makes sense. <laughs> and, and a lot of people talk about it. It's like if, if you're not invested in something and uh, it's, it's hard to do when you don't have a lot of money, but if you're not invested in something, then your money is sort of sitting around almost doing nothing. You know, you're maybe a savings account or, um, uh, all that stuff, but yeah, uh, investing in something is definitely like the way that people should be going. It's 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 worse than nothing. You're actually losing money. It's like holding a melting ice cube. It's like holding an ice cube in your hand. Yeah, um, yeah. it is just just shedding. Um, so uh, and and we got that variable rate, right? We're gonna sit, the government is gonna dictate to me the rate of inflation. Well, the rate of inflation is different for everybody. And you, you have to be able to, you know, sizably make these metrics on your own. You have, you have to assess risk. And, you know, if I'm living in my parents' basement, um, you know, I like to play Xbox and I order Domino's on Friday. Uh, you haven't seen that much inflation. Um, but you know, if you have children, pay for healthcare, um, you pay for car insurance, childcare, uh, groceries, you know, when you start adding all up, never mind if you were an electrician. And you didn't store that copper, and then your Romex wire goes from eighty dollars to one hundred twenty-seven, and you 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 bid out a fixed rate job, you're in trouble. Yeah, not for sure. What up, guys? I figured I'd hop in while I'm editing just to give you a couple notes. This interview was super fun to make. It was super fun to record, but it's just super long. So we decided to cut it into two parts for you guys. Same time, same place. Next week, we're going to continue with our second part of the Ken Parley interview, which is just as awesome as the first half. We talk about things like Tesla insurance, facing adversity, nightmare tenants and how he dealt with them, Airbnb tips, tricks, hacks, all that cool stuff, other surprises and much, much more. So thank you guys so much for listening. We're going to get back to my over crazy energy outro to part one. Make sure you join us next week for part two as we continue diving in to this awesome interview with Ken Parley. Thanks so much, y'all, and have a blessed week. Well, let me tell you something, guys. Here, download the uplift. When we have someone at Ken Parley's pedigree, it can't be jammed into just one week. So guess what, everybody? This is going to be a (laughs) two-parter. So join us the same time, same place here at Download the Uplift for our second part with our real estate guru expert, Ken Parley. And don't forget, this is Download the Uplift, a place where when we fall, we try and uplift you. We'll see you next week for part two. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. See you next week. Oh, that's going to be sick.